How and when did life form? The answer to these questions has both captivated and somewhat eluded humankind for centuries. In this film, we will attempt to address these questions and shed some light on some of the more viable theories regarding the origin of life. Early life is thought to have formed during the early Archean Aeon, which spanned from 4 to 2.5 billion years ago. The earliest solid evidence of life lies in fossilised microbial structures called stromatolites, dated at 3.7 billion years old. During the Archean Aeon, the early Earth endured harsh conditions and heavy bombardments of meteor showers, which brought many important materials such as iron and water, and may have even sterilised some of the early attempts at life on Earth. One popular view for what was the trigger for life to form is abiogenesis, which is the original evolution of life from inorganic or inanimate substances. Under the idea of abiogenesis, two popular branches are the biochemical model and the hydrothermal model. In 1952, Stanley Miller, a graduate student at the University of Chicago, carried out the now famous Miller-Urey experiment, in which he operated a closed system apparatus with one flask containing heated water to represent a primeval ocean, and another flask containing a mixture of methane, ammonia, and hydrogen gases to represent Earth's early chemically reducing atmosphere. Both flasks were connected by rubber tubes while electrical sparks were added, which acted as a stand-in for lightning. After a week, the water turned a pinkish-brown colour, to which Miller revealed was a broth of amino acids, fatty acids, sugars and other organic compounds. Miller positively identified five amino acids, however, more recent analysis on the original apparatus used revealed over 20 amino acids were present, more than the number which naturally occur in life. Recent scientific consensus believes that the early Archean atmosphere may have been less chemically reducing than originally thought, or even neutral. Such an atmosphere would diminish both the amount and variety of amino acids that could be produced. However, studies that include iron and carbonate minerals, now thought to have been present in Archean oceans, have again produced a diverse array of amino acids. Nobel laureate Harold Urey, who was Miller's supervisor on the project, famously commented on the implications of the experiment for explaining the origin of life. If God didn't do it this way, he missed a good bet. The hydrothermal model. Extremophile organisms get their name due to the fact they can survive in extreme conditions. Hydrothermal vents provide a setting which mirror the properties of early earth oceans with hot acidic discharges. Some of the species that live here include tube worms, clams, octopi, crabs and fish. Theories have been put forward about how black smokers' vent fluid was the key to the origin of life. Dissolved gases and metals fuel the microbial communities that serve as the base of the food chain through chemosynthesis. Recent studies suggest that maybe carbonate chimneys with alkaline and low temperature vent fluid may have initiated the origin of life. The influx of a high pH fluid into an acidic ocean sets about a proton gradient whereby Hydrogen and hydroxide ions can interact, thus energy can be transferred and small organic compounds can be created. What is the next step in creating actual life? The RNA world hypothesis. This is the idea that early RNA molecules gave rise to the earliest forms of life as a result of an ongoing process of self-replication and molecular evolution. RNA, present in all living organisms, is thought to be a precursor to DNA as it plays a similar, albeit more primitive part in genetic data storage and has a more functional role. Experiments have shown that under simulated archaean conditions, it is possible to synthesize pyrimidines, ribose and phosphates, which combine to create ribonucleotides, the individual vertebrae that form polymers of RNA thought to have originally formed in primordial pools or in deep sea hydrothermal vents. These strands have been shown to self-replicate by joining with other nucleotides to form an inverse chain. When heated, these chains separate, one becoming two. This process then repeats to create more inversely identical strands. Through mutation and selection, interactive strands known as ribozymes can form. These act as biological catalysts capable of manip manipulating an array of organic molecules to carry out many different functions, such as combining different organic molecules and separating others. 
This has led scientists to hypothesize the complex ribozymes developed that were able to produce nucleotides from materials available to them, as well as utilize other organic molecules to perform more elaborate and interconnected tasks. Could protocells, similar to this theoretical model, be the missing link between the RNA world and the earliest forms of life? The answer remains speculative, but research is constantly ongoing. We now know that under the natural conditions of the archaean, the organic molecules available could combine naturally to form amino acids, essential building blocks of proteins and essential biomolecules for all life, which created the opportunity for abiogenesis. Abiogenesis is thought to have occurred on the Earth's surface in primordial pools or in the depths of the archaean ocean on hydrothermal vents. These conditions provided the necessary ingredients to create RNA, a molecule able to catalyse its own reproduction and advancement. This seemingly self-involved molecule may have manipulated materials in its environment to give rise to the first cells and the last universal common ancestor. Oh.